Hello there, and oh, welcome to Funny Business. You know that the nice weather has come now. Have you noticed that it has a very strange effect on men? I mean, you'd never see a woman walking around like this, would you? And we'll be working up a sweat this week with the comedy legend that is Mr Bill Oddie, the greying genius of Mr John Shuttleworth, and all the laughing matter that matters on TV and video. In the 1970s, Monty Python was not the only surreal sketch group. The goodies were just as funny and just as big. But do you remember the little hurry one? Well, that was Bill Oddie. And it still is. Mr Oddie. Well, sir, sir, come on, a bit more respect. Let me, sh let me, sir, sorry. <laughs> let me shake you by the hand, sir. Thank you very much. Because, um, you're, you're worse than me. I'm all hot and sweaty. And so are well, you, it's that's summer. Right. It is. So, um, <laughs> you're on here because, well, first of all, let me say that my first record I ever bought, The Funky Gibbon, it was one of your one of your little ditties. Uh, yes, it was. Yes, <laughs> that's a fun admission of yours, actually. Well, it not. is late night. Nobody's watching it. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Your secret is safe. You'd be surprised. Me. <laughs> <laughs> why? I, Can I ask why? That's I've never I asked. Um, why did you buy it? I mean, um, I'm not admonishing you. Well, I thank I'm, you very you know, much. I earned threatens from that, probably. Well, I'm supposed to be asking questions, but as soon as you ask, <laughs> um, because. The weird thing is, because the goodies in, in my mind is a kind of a, a surreal memory, because I was so mm. young, but mm. I remember loving them, but I convert... You have no sympathy for me for saying <laughs> you're young, but how, how young were you? What well, I'm 29 now, so yes. I don't know how old that would young. be. Was I? Yes. Well, I mean, what people don't realise, perhaps, um, even old people, because they've tried to blank it, was uh, that it ran for 10 years. Right. We were actually, we were quite literally were of the 70s, and I think the show was of the 70s in right. many ways. You know, it has a very 70s look yeah. to it, which I don't mind. It's yeah. sort of fashionable to knock the 70s. I don't think it's the most interesting, one of the most interesting decades we've ever had. Yeah. But not because I did it. <laughs> 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 I was in it no, I mean, I mean, so it was a long time. So, and, I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, you, you couldn't have seen all 10 years of it. It's almost impossible. Well, yeah. you'd been dead, wouldn't you? No, you wouldn't be born. Wouldn't be dead, right. no, well. An embryo. So you'd be an embryo. An endoscope in there. <laughs> Go on, watch this. Calm down, child. <laughs> Sorry, go on, go on. Where were we? Where were no, we? but anyway, I'm I bought it because I liked it and it was a, it was a cracking track and I must have beaten into the goodies. Well, yeah, well, good. There was nothing to be ashamed of. You know, you'd grow out of it eventually. Um, <laughs> so anyway, it's, on this, it's on this CD. That's it is on the here. CD, yes. I mean, this, this came as a terrible shock, I have to say. This is nothing... I'm, I'd hasten to assure all viewers that this wasn't our idea. <laughs> you know, I've, been, I've been trying to blank this for you. I've been trying to suppress this image for years. I've just achieved a degree of dignity <laughs> with my wildlife programmes. And what do they do? They produce this bloody thing. It's, it's, like, ah it's a bit like David Attenborough coming out with a, an album of George Formby covers. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. It isn't a bad You're idea. You're going to give them ideas. Go on, if this was an improv show, you'd have to do it now. <laughs> OK, it's George Formby. I'm standing on the corner waiting for a certain little gorilla to come back. <laughs> something. I don't know. No, I can't do it. <laughs> so it's, what, it's an album of all the kind well, of it's, stupid songs. There's, really. Oh, and they've left some off, too, I'll tell you. And we did actually do three or four albums. So there were about 30 or 40 to choose from. And believe it or not, this really is showing off, but out of these 20, about five or six of those were top 20 records. That's what perhaps people of a younger generation don't realise, that it, in the, uh, there was a period during the mid-'70s where... Um, we were sort of in the top 10, top 20, you used to do Top of the Pops, which is the only program you yeah. could go and do in those days. And uh, I remember Melody Maker producing a sort of a chart at the end of, I think, 76, yeah. saying um, of the top groups in the country, you know, yeah. and there was sort of like Mud and the Bay City Rollers, to go back that, what, what, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> and we were about fourth or fifth top group in the country. The show is like a surreal memory for me because I was so mm. young. But I just all remember I remember is the Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah. yeah. With this huge um, beanstalk and then there's the yeah, flying there's, there's all those images and I think <laughs> this, is, this is gonna get dangerously like analysing comedy time. <laughs> but it's no, we do uh, it all the time. But, here, yeah, I bet you know, we've got time. <laughs> Somebody has to do it. Better <laughs> than it's late night somewhere, you know, <laughs> and, uh, the privacy of your own studio. But it's um, no I I, I think what we did produce was images. I think it's actually funny enough, it mm. sort of backs up my theory about the goodies, which mm. wasn't 
I don't think was anything like as hip or sophisticated as, as Python, for example, or something like that, and certainly didn't have the worldwide appeal. But I think we were the pop group. It's almost like, you know, they, like, they, I'm sure I could come up with some terrible analogy in pop terms, you know, like they were the Stones and we were the Beatles or something like well, that. Like but the monkeys, maybe. The monkeys, oh, wow. No? <laughs> Maybe not, then. Maybe not. Oh, God, what did he say <laughs> Let's then? forget that, then. <laughs> so the other thing I suppose I wanted to ask you was, I mean, the CD's come out, but why yeah. the hell... Is it, is why? It not no, just leave it no. at that. Why the <laughs> hell has it come out? <laughs> no, yes. why the hell hasn't the goodies been repeated? Recently, I mean, well, for sure if now. you can shed any light on it, particularly controllers of the BBC, <laughs> past or present, if you happen to be watching, but uh, surely do now, write and tell because, us. Because, you know, everybody who was, who was mm. a kid then will now rediscover it. Like, I, I'd love to watch it again, to see yeah. what, you know, just to see what well, the bloody hell was going on. Well, believe you me, some of, the, some of them don't bear repeat. <laughs> <laughs> so the goodies went for ten years, the show yeah, went for ten years. Yeah. So what, in the end, why did the, the split up? Ah, uh, um... It's, it's, it's rather an, an unsavoury answer to that. It's oh, very dear. specific, actually. The, I remember the day, I'll tell this as quickly as possible, I remember mm. the day we were called in after ten years or so, mm. and we'd been doing, we never had a contract for more than one mm. year. They would, we'd do a series, then they call you in and say, uh, we'd like you to do some more, and we'd do this some more. Mm. We never had any, any continuity or security about mm. it. And then one day the BBC boss called us in and said, we're doing Hitchhiker's Guide from the Galaxy. Yeah. Great. But, they said, we can't service special effects for both series at the same time. And we said, OK, fine. Uh, and they said, what we're going to do is we're going to try Hitchhiker's Guide, and if it's successful, we might want to do another series of that, mm. and we might not want to do another series of yours. But if it isn't successful, we probably want to do some right. more. And we didn't find this terribly flattering. <laughs> <laughs> we said, oh, sorry, so you want us to sit around for the next year doing absolutely nothing to see whether this is successful, and yeah. you might ask us back. Um, do you mind if we try and go somewhere else? <laughs> and basically, the rumour got through largely because we kept ringing up people and telling them um, to London Weekend, who mm. made us an offer we couldn't refuse, basically, mm. of three years' contract. So we mm. were actually paid well for the first mm -hmm. time and had three years. Mm -hmm. And then, then cut a long story short, Michael Grade moved out from there, John mm. Burt came in, mm. Axe does, and various other things, um, including Stanley Baxter, for example, at the same time. And we were never heard of again. <laughs> it's a bit of a tragic story, really. But, uh, it is rather sad. I wish you hadn't asked me to remember it. It's rather but, painful. And there'll be more of Oddball Bill after the break. <laughs> ah, Kilkenny is a small town in the beautiful west of Ireland. Ah, what could possibly disrupt this idyllic peace and tranquillity? Well, a couple of weekends ago, the third Kilkenny Cat Laughs Comedy Festival completely took over the town, and four days of comedic mayhem ensued. The unique character of the festival has made it one of the world's most popular for a whole range of comedy performers, as Kevin Gildee and Graham Norton explain. Tell me about the Kilkenny Festival then, because it's quite it's it's well loved by the comics <coughs> more than you know, a lot of people don't really know very much about it. The don't, which is brilliant and I think eventually that'll disappear. Uh -huh. The more it's loved, the better known it'll become by definition. It started off this is the third year uh -huh. and I love the idea that it's in Kilkenny, which is about, I don't know, two hour drive from Dublin. Uh -huh. So they to an extent stole the festival for Dublin and I sort mm -hmm. of love that because Dublin's the capital. And Kilkenny is a very small village, and there's basically comedy in every single possible venue they can open, mm -hmm. you know. And there's no competition, so therefore there's less pressure than Edinburgh, and okay. generally a nicer feel. I think that's why the comics like it. Also because it's small, intimate, and there's just great crack down there. Well, it's fantastic, because it's, it's three days, so you can just go mad. You don't need to worry about anything, uh, you know, because... Somehow you'll stagger through three or four gigs. It's not like Edinburgh where you've got weeks and weeks to get through, so you have to be a bit concerned. So everyone just doesn't care. And also there's no competition and everyone's been invited here. So everyone's quite relaxed and just having a good time. I found this weekend the audience is incredibly friendly and just so up for it. Because I was doing a late night show, you know, I start at 11 15. So I imagine everyone would be really drunk and trash and be hard work. But they're not, they're getting it all and they're they're fantastic. Well, I don't know how popular I am at the festival, but I suppose there's a sort of freak show value, really, because uh, I feel as if most people who come to my show, they've never actually seen a puff before, actually, 
live breathing one. Uh, so there's a kind of, there is a sort of pointing and laughing. So I'm not sure if the laughing with me or at me, but it just was really nice. One of the highlights of the weekend was the annual Ireland against the rest of the world soccer game, a real grudge match to prove who's the funniest footballers. Comics included the poetic Owen O'Neill and John Hegley. The pitch seemed so wide. We nearly spilled the side. We were in red. And we were green. It was two o'clock. We were just out of bed. They were the shamrock. They were the sham. We aren't the cham. We aren't. Mind you, it's only half time. But you're losing 17 nil. Beside the camel. At the pitch's edge. A family was sat. In their car. The briefest dialogue went thus. Is it a charity match? No, it's Irish comedians versus the rest of the world comedians. What colour are the Irish to? Ireland won by a handsome margin and as a dejected captain explained, it was an emotional day. We tried, um, but it all went horribly wrong. As you can see, our fans actually destroyed the stadium. And the season kicks up again in August, the festival season that is, in Edinburgh, perhaps the only place that can rival Kilkenny for scenery as well as comedy. And of course, funny business will be there too. Back in April, we tipped young Lee Matt for the top. And what do you know, he's only gone and got his own series. The jockey-turned-joker host Gas, Channel 4's new showcase for fresh stand-up talent. So is this all part of um, Channel 4's attempt to build a, a whole new generation of young comics, to build a relationship with them? That's right. The, yeah. Yeah. You've hit the nail on the head. Right, yeah. Because I think what Channel 4 are doing is establishing... The... <laughs> Can you tell I've been proved? <laughs> They're establishing a sort of... Uh, thing with new acts, well, a relationship, relationship, a relationship with new acts, like a lot of the big, big names, Joe Brand, mm -hmm. Jack D, mm -hmm. Bob Carroll D, mm -hmm. Carroll Carol D, <laughs> they, all, they all started off on four, you know, yeah. oh yes, and, and then they've moved on, haven't they, they've moved on to bigger things, Idi Amin, he was great, yeah, well, his stand-up's not as good as it used to be, um, now, so, so that was the, that was the, that's the idea behind Gas, then, is that's it? That's the idea, new acts on, uh, on Channel 4, and so, trying to, trying to, you know, why Gas? Why Gas? Because, um, it's supposed to be, uh, I don't know actually, I suppose it's supposed to represent energy, mm. but that you can't see. But when you open your mouth, it comes out. Okay, um, and, and that's represented on stage, I believe. Yeah, there's lots of gas coming through the floor, and there's a gas backdrop with lots of steam. Right. The gas, the theme music is done with gas. It's gas, I'll say this. They've done this, uh, it sounds great. They've done this thing where they've got the music made out of gas, so it's sort of that's what it that's what it is. Who did that one? I just did it. Maybe. No, I mean the, oh, no, the, on, on the on, on the, the show. Uh, some professional uh, gas man. <laughs> <laughs> you can play it, play a bit. I don't know. Channel having all that gas around's a bit dangerous, isn't it? It is, yeah. It is with my sparking wit. Yeah. See, Electricity. Yeah. Shocking. Gas and cheap and current. Yeah. So, Oh, well, that should be marvellous, and I should enjoy it thoroughly. I shall. So, when does it start? Uh, first of July, is that right? I've no idea. <laughs> I should know. <laughs> first of July. We're not the ones on should it, we, mate. Should we say the first? Can it come up on the bottom of the screen? I would imagine so. It starts on this date here. Right. And what nights is it? Uh, that night there. <laughs> well, this time. I think it's Tuesday nights-ish. Okay. 11-ish. Channel 4-ish. Versatile singer-songwriter from Sheffield, South Yorkshire, John Shuttleworth, takes to the road this week with his rockumentary, 500 Bus Stops. Hold on tight. Did you, uh, you know, hone your act in the club circuit? That's, that's how you... you yeah, know, I mean, I, I play... Uh, to be honest, I play in my garage, mostly. Oh, right, OK. Because I've been banned from the lounge. Because it interferes <laughs> with the telly, you know. That's not funny, lad. It's a really grave matter. Because, no, even on headphone mode, there's a bit of spillage. And also, there's a very real risk of excessive saliva being produced here. <laughs> think about that next time you got your Walkman on. OK. You're listening to Buddy Holly <laughs> and Morrissey. You know, think about it. Yeah. But uh, I'm fine in the garage because I'm on, on the deep freeze. It's just the okay. right height. I've got my keyboard there. And I sit on a 24-pack of Diet Sprite. <laughs> which we get, we get that in bulk from Neto's. You know, it's fine. And uh, obviously, as the, the seat gets lower, mm -hmm. but, the cans are transferred to the kitchen mm. for general consumption by the family. The seat gets lower. Yeah. I don't mind that, because yeah. I quite like the challenge of going like that, as <laughs> I get higher and higher. And in the second part of our Bill Oddie interview, we asked the bearded wonder about any plans to reform the goodies. 
So you'd never be tempted to get to have a reunion then? No, no, no. I would be embarrassed. One night stand? Be embarrassed. Of, of Certainly not. Used? You went, no. oh, well, goodies. Yeah, oh, I see. Oh, fine. Um, yeah, that took me back to the 70s again, yes. But <laughs> well, you were, um, I mean, you... Uh, you no, uh, we never performed live, you see. That is one of the strange... I wish we had yeah. performed live more, but the nature of the TV show was very television. Television, And we yeah, actually yeah. resisted that. We yeah. were asked to do tours. In some ways, I wish we had, because I enjoyed performing live. Mm. But we always felt we could never do on stage what we did on television. Right. But we could have done a sort of... Vic and Bob type show, for yeah, example, yeah. and I've been to see their live show. Yeah. Thought, oh, we could have, that's exactly the sort of show we, we should have done and uh -huh. could have done, uh, but yeah. we never did. And so there's nothing to go back to now. We're, you know, oh, poor old sods. You couldn't bring a man now. You know, <laughs> no, it, it, it frightened them. <laughs> and, it, and it would hurt. And that's just the audience. No, it would... It would <laughs> It would hurt. <laughs> now, I, I like the idea of a tribute group, you see. I want some young people yeah. to go on the road as the, the not-so-goodies or something, or the new yeah. goodies. Yeah. Don't think that hasn't been suggested. Thank you, some children's TV guy suggested that a few years yeah. ago. And you said, no, no. Don't. And they were going to get three, three young Paul Schofields, or whatever his name is. <laughs> I don't mean Paul Philip Schofield, Schofield. Philip Schofield. No, Paul Schofield's Paul better, Schofield actually. Be better, yeah. John Gilgood and Sir Lawrence <laughs> Olivier. All on a, all on a three-seater bike, yeah. And they were going to sort of drag that on. And he said, no, you can't do it. Because yeah. nobody could afford to do it properly, apart from anything no, else. No, because I, mean, I imagine the budgets that yeah. were the goodies were yeah. huge. It must have been. I have no idea what Even bigger than this show, I would imagine. I would have thought even bigger. Yeah, yeah. just, uh, well, only just, I'd imagine. <laughs> right, well, thank you very much. And, and I'll, I'll, re, I'll relive go. it all. It, it is yours. It is yours. It so you've got well, you're not that different, actually, to be honest. That's perhaps, very kind. Perhaps there's a different... <laughs> you are, there's a new, different do you need new glasses? Perhaps oh, a, yeah, different, there's a different <laughs> hue to your hair. There is. Somewhere. There's a bloody sight more of it. Mind you, I could still grow it like that, and very embarrassing I'd look if I did. But I used to have, yeah, ridiculously long, uh, and thinner as well. A lot thinner. <laughs> right, well, thank you very much. Very thank nice you. to meet you, sir. And, it's a great pleasure. To relive my childhood. <laughs> Okay. We survived it. <laughs> <laughs> you know that great theatre expression, the show must go on? Well, that's the difference between television and theatre, because this show must go off. Trump.